Lord be with you. With, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I'm telling you not to worry about your life and what you are to eat, nor about your body and how you are to clothe it. Surely life means more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they are? Can any of you, for all his worry, add one single cubit to his span of life? And why worry about clothing? Think of the flowers growing in the fields. They never have to work or spin. Yet I assure you that not even Solomon in all his glory was robed like one of these. Now if that is how God clothes the grass in the field, which is there today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, will he not much more look after you, you men of little faith? So do not worry. Do not say, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? How are we to be clothed? It is the pagans who set their hearts on all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Set your hearts on his kingdom first and on his righteousness and all these other things will be given you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, the feast, the solemnity of Saint Mary of the Cross, Saint Mary Maclop, the first saint of Australia, This story was narrated to me by a lawyer on the central coast in New South Wales. A priest came to his office once, and uh, this was um, many years ago, I think nearly 20 years ago, but came to his office once and said that he wanted to buy a place for to build a church. And he said, I've already... I've already found where the place is and uh, I know this is what God wants us to have. And so the lawyer asked him, do you, um, do you have, what kind of a budget are you looking at? And the priest said, I don't have any money at all. Um, I have no budget. And then the lawyer opened out his, his map of the area and said, Father, can you point out where the where the property is and that is when the priest pointed out where the property is and this lawyer said um, father I don't think that's going to work because that area is not zoned for public worship and so it is impossible for you to build a church over there but father still said he said no this is what God wants for of us and I'm sure that we are going to get it and the, the lawyer then asked the priest how is it, Father, that you can be so sure about it? And Father said, well, I pass that property every time. And so I got into the property and onto one of the trees in that property, I have nailed a relic of St. Mary Maclop. At that time, she wasn't a saint, she was blessed. And I've nailed a relic of St. Mary Maclop on that tree. And I know through her intercession, we are going to get it. This lawyer at that time wasn't a practicing uh, much of a believer. And uh, so he laughed it off and he said, I'll look into it. But praise God, just a few weeks after that, the zoning in that area changed. And the people who owned that property, who had no intentions of selling it, decided to sell the property 
and they were so desperate to sell it that they actually gave this property to the priest or to the church for an advance of a few dollars, not, not a few thousand dollars, an advance of a few dollars. That is all that priest had in his hands. But on that property today stands a big church. I'm not very clear which that church is. I can't remember very clearly when it's not your own story. That's when you tend to forget certain aspects of it. But um, if those who are watching from the central coast um, would know this story, if it's connected to their church, then I would like to know and confirm what that church is. I have an idea, but I'm not very sure. So I don't want to say it on, on live on air. But that church is a result of the intercession of this wonderful saint, Mary Maclop. Mary of the Cross, a person who went around Australia in different parts, especially to the outskirts of Australia and the outbacks of Australia and started schools for the poor. And she and her sisters made such a huge difference and, and brought in so much of graces and blessings into this land by their faith and their zeal for the glory of God. But was it easy? It wasn't easy. It was tough for her, especially for, for St. Mary Maclop. It was really, really tough. She was so misunderstood in the midst of what she was doing that she was even excommunicated by the church in 1871 in a misunderstanding and a problem with the hierarchy. And she was, she was, she was excommunicated wrongly. That excommunication was lifted around a year later but she continued to be persecuted. She continued to be misunderstood. So much so that she who was the superior general of the St. Joseph sisters, she was removed from that post. Later on would get re-elected by her sisters back into that post. And it was never easy. And sometimes you think, how is it that you continue in the midst of so many people misunderstanding you? So many people persecuting you. And to understand that, we've got to understand her heart, her heart and for whom she believed she was doing it. There's a beautiful quote, and that's, I think, one of the more famous quotes of, of St. Saint, Saint Mary of the Cross. She says, whatever troubles may be before you, accept them bravely, remembering whom you are trying to follow. Remembering whom you are trying to follow. Do not be afraid. Love one another. Bear with one another and let charity guide you all your life. So you don't hold back love. You don't hold back charity because you're misunderstood. But remember whom, for whom you are doing all you're doing. And then she ends it with these words, God will reward you only as he can. Now sometimes it's, it's so hard for us. We, we do things and we are still misunderstood. We do it with a lot of love, with a lot of passion, and we are still misunderstood. And it's saints like Mary Maclop who is who's actually telling us, remember for whom you are doing what you're doing. And so then don't hold back charity. Don't hold back love. Continue to love. Continue to give charity. Continue to do acts of charity. Continue to offer yourself because of whom and for whom you are doing what you're doing. In today's gospel passage, it says, Therefore, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink. Do not worry about how people will accept you or they will not. But there's this beautiful verse in Matthew chapter, chapter 6, verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? How comforting to remind ourselves, even in the midst of us doing whatever we are doing, be it in a family, as a father or a mother, when you do so much and you don't get anything in return. As a husband or a wife, and you don't, you don't get that respect in return. Just remember, that is your vocation. And you're doing it because God has given you that vocation. As a priest, what I do is because of what God has given me in my priesthood. 
I do it for God. I do it for the people, but I do it for God, for whom I'm doing what I'm doing. And maybe at times I'll be misunderstood. Maybe at times I will, I will be rejected. Just as in your homes it happens all the time. Your children might reject you. Your spouse might reject you. Even after you're doing what you're doing with all the good intentions of your heart. Then remind yourself for whom you're doing it. And remind yourself of this verse. You are of value to God. Far more than these innocent, beautiful creatures or the birds in the sky and the lovely flowers that the Lord adorns. With so much of grace and blessings of the colors that they have. But you're so much more of value to him. And therefore, don't hold back. The same church that excommunicated St. Mary of the Cross would in 2010 exalt her as a saint and canonize her. How beautiful God's ways. When no one understood at that time, but the same church then opens its eyes to certain realities that God then shows the church to then exalt the saint into the position she is today. So don't hold back like St. Mary MacLeod says. Don't hold back charity. Don't hold back love just because we are hurt, just because we are misunderstood. But keep doing. It's always hard. It's tough. It's always easier to go into a shell but we keep opening up because we are doing it for God. There's in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19. Therefore, let suffering in accordance with God's will entrust themselves to a faithful creator while continuing to do good. So even though we have that suffering, we continue to do good. We persevere in the midst of trials. In the letter of St. James, chapter 1, verse 12, blessed is anyone who endures temptations. In certain translations, it is perseveres under trial. Blessed is anyone who endures and perseveres under trial. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. That crown of life is given by God. Like St. Mary, Mary of the Cross would say, God will reward you as only as he can. No one else can do that. And so we embrace that because that is where God's faithfulness is seen. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but God who values us so much. He will keep providing for us in the letter, of, letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 23. Letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, 23. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. So as a father, as a mother, as a son, as a daughter, in your relationships, in your workplaces, wherever you are, do it like God. You're doing it for God. Remember for whom you're doing what you're doing. And then don't hold back that love. Don't hold back that charity. And then when the time is right, God will crown you with his glory. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Lord Jesus, we thank you for saints like Mary of the Cross who went through so much but whose reactions when they went through that wasn't violent, wasn't abusive, they did clarify their name and their positions. They stood strong in heart. But their strength came from knowing that they did what they did because they did it for you. Give us the grace when we journey in our own vocations and times will be tough and challenges will be many. Give us the grace to remind ourselves we do what we do because we do it for you. And when the time will come, you in your wisdom and your love will give us the crowning glory. Give us the grace to patiently wait for that. Amen.